All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x is equal to 100. So I'm going to first start by taking the natural log, or ln, on both sides. So I have ln x to the power of x is equal to ln 100. Now, if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, I can move this x1 and b to the front. So this can equal b times ln a. So for ln x to the power of x, I can move x to the front, and I'm going to get x times ln x is equal to ln 100. Now ln 100, that's the same thing as ln of 10 squared. So I get x times ln x is equal to ln 10 squared. And if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, again, I can move 2 to the front. So I get x times ln x is equal to 2 times ln 10. Now, there is something called the W Lambert function. And if I take the W Lambert function of something in the form e to the power of, sorry, a times e to the power of a, this is going to equal a. So this is basically what the W Lambert function is. So if there's something in the form a to the power, a times e to the power of a, that's going to equal a. So what I want to do over here is... I'm going to rewrite x here as e to the power of ln of x because the e and ln cancel out and this results in simply x. So I'm just going to rewrite x as e to the power of ln of x and I have this times ln x is equal to 2 times ln 10. And now this is in the form a times e to the power of a. So now if I take the w Lambert function on both sides, This results in ln x equaling w of 2 times ln 10. And now if I take e to the power of both sides, I get e to the power of ln x is equal to e to the power of w of 2 ln 10. And e to the power of ln x, that's going to equal x. So I get x is equal to e to the power of w of 2 times ln 10. And this is equal to 3.597285, which rounds up to 3.597. So this is my answer to this problem. Alright, so in this problem, I have 4 to the power of 1 plus x plus 4 to the power of 1 minus x is equal to 10. So to start, if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of n times a to the power of n. So in this case, I have 4 to the power of 1 plus x. So it's going to equal 4 to the power of 1 times 4 to the power of x plus I have 4 to the power of 1 times 4 to the power of negative x is equal to 10. Now I'm going to factor out 4 to the power of 1. Actually, before that, 4 to the power of negative x, that's the same thing as 4, 1 over 4 to the power of x, and 4 times 1 over 4 to the power of x is going to be 4 over 4 to the power of x. So now, I'm going to let 4 to the power of x equal to the variable y. So now I have 4y plus 4 over y is equal to 10. And now, to solve this, I'm going to multiply both sides by y. So I get 4y squared plus 4 is equal to 10y, meaning 4y squared 4y squared minus 10y plus 4 is equal to 0. And this means that 2y squared minus 5y plus 2 is equal to 0. And you have to use the quadratic formula to solve this. So you get negative 2, or sorry, negative negative 5, so positive 5 
plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 5 squared, which is 25, minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is 2, all over 2a. And this is equal to 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 16, which is 9, over 4, which is equal to 5 plus or minus 3 over 4, which is equal to either 8 over 4 or 2 over 4. Now, 8 over 4 is 2, and 2 over 4 is 1 half. So I have y equals 2 and y equals 1 half. Now, remember how we let 4 to the power of x equal to y. So I first have 4 to the power of x is equal to 2, and if 4 to the power of x equals 2, then this means that x is equal to 1 half. Now I have 4 to the power of x is equal to 1 half. And this means that x is equal to negative 1 half. All right, so in this problem, I have 2 to the power of x is equal to 5 to the power of x plus 2. So to solve this, I'm going to first start by using the property of exponents that states that a to the power of m plus n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So in this case, we have 5 to the power of x plus 2, and we can think of a as 5, m as x, and n as 2. So we want to put this in this form right here. So to do that, well, a is 5, so we have 5 to the power of m, which is x, times 5 to the power of n, which is 2. So now we have 2 to the power of x is equal to 5 to the power of x times 5 to the power of 2. And now 5 to the power of 2, we all know that's 25. So now I have 2 to the power of x is equal to 5 to the power of x times 25. Now, we want both of these x's to be together. So to do that, I'm going to have to move 5 to the power of x to my left-hand side. And to do that, I have to divide both sides by 5 to the power of x. So then these two cancel out, and I get 2 to the power of x over 5 to the power of x is equal to 25. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m over a to the power of n, or sorry, if I have something in the form a to the power of m over b to the power of n, this is the same thing as a over b to the power of n. So 2 to the power of x over 5 to the power of x, that's going to equal 2 over 5 to the power of x, which is equal to 25. Now from here, if we want to solve for the value of x, we're going to have to make it a real variable instead of an exponent. And to do that, I'm going to take the log on both sides. So I have log 2 over 5 to the power of x is equal to log 25. And the reason I did this is because I can use the property that states that if I have something to form log a to the power of b, I can move this x1 and b to the front. So it's going to equal b times log a. So in this case, I have x times log 2 over 5 is equal to log 25 meaning x is equal to log 25 over log 2 over 5. 